Good morning, everybody. Morning, everybody. Welcome to the Tom and Kelly Show. It's Thursday morning, about 8.30. What's the date today? It's about 8.30. <laughs> Say June 13th? It is June... 14th. No, 15th. 15th. It's June 15th. And we're getting in the middle of the year, so... Yeah, wow. We're still not to the longest day of the year yet, though. <laughs> we can still garden until 9.30 almost. It'll become 10 o'clock by the time we get done. Another week and uh, another week of summer solstice, and then uh, yep. yeah, days get yeah. shorter. So, but we've, but we've got some stuff going on here in southeast Minnesota and kind of all over the state, really, in regards to water. What's going on, Tom? We, I, I was watching the news this morning. We're officially 2.2 inches below for the month. This is the wettest month of the year, and we are 2.2 inches below after just two weeks yeah <laughs> so we're hurting and I think um, you'll see it a lot of people are starting to water because they they feel the need but we're gonna talk about that today but first of all what <laughs> where are we Tom? where are we <laughs> okay we're not at Minnehaha Falls <laughs> um, when we talked about watering wisely I go Kelly yes we're, let's go by a lake let's go to the Mississippi let's go by some falls but no this is not Minnehaha Falls. This is a place very near and dear to me. This is my front garden, um, and so we'll kind of walk around here. So yes, this is uh, this is where we are. Here we are. Here we Tom's are. Tom's garden, and we're going to talk water wisely, which is a toolkit with University of Minnesota Extension Master Gardeners, and it's got a lot of great information in it. Like Tom said, many people are feeling they need to water, but I got to tell you. We're not quite there to this maximum need for watering yet. One of the key factors of the Water Wisely Toolkit is suggesting that you dig down six to nine inches of your soil. And unless you've got a very small raised bed with a porous side, your soils have a fair amount of moisture, a little bit left at that six to nine inch range, most people. And if you're in a somewhat newer subdivision, like Tom's house is, you may have really high clay soils that are holding a lot of moisture as well. Which which I have. Yeah, which you yeah. So which six you to have. nine inches when she told me that, I'm going like, that's gonna be a little tough. <laughs> Some yeah, spots. you yeah, you've got clay, but it, it's moist under there. The problem that we're seeing right now is a lot of folks are watering their lawns and perennial ryegrass, which makes up a fair amount of our lawns here in this region of the country, is supposed to go brown. It's supposed to go dormant. It doesn't have the water. It is reserving its energy and keeping its roots alive under the surface by not throwing up new green shoots and by going dormant, by shutting those leaves down so that it doesn't need to take up a bunch of extra moisture. So think, so think about whether you really need to water or not. The thing that I think is most critical to water, to start watering, and we could check with the DNR or Minnesota State Forestry Division um, or even City, City Parks Forestry Division is watering the trees. But if you're watering your ornamentals, maybe think twice about the amount of water that you're giving to those right now because it's just, it, it's not necessary. We have water issues globally. Um, we have reserves that are down. Uh, we've all heard about the water issues in agriculture out west, the prior appropriation laws that they have versus our riparian laws here in um, wetter, wetter climate east of the Rockies. So we need to really start considering water. So we're gonna talk about the Water Wisely Toolkit today. And we've got some tools and some tricks that we just want to want to kind of show you. Um, and this is basically a perennial garden, flowering garden. I've got some annuals thrown in here, so kind of worried about things I've seen in the water. But native plants generally have deep root systems because they thrived here for many, many years. Well, many <laughs> hundreds, hundreds, <laughs> of thousands centuries. of years. So <laughs> they've evolved. They know Minnesota. You know, climate as it was, and maybe how it's evolving, but but yeah. they have deep roots, and so right. if you use if you native, use native, native plants, species, native species, you are don't what have to water every, on, You right? don't have to water as often. So. And and mown mown lawn is not a native species here, but we need <laughs> it. We need it for our sports activities. We need it for recreation. We need it for just gathering spaces. So lawns are an important feature of our society and what we like to do. But the large expanses of lawn that we have are not best for our environment going forward. So Tom waters his natives and his ornamentals judiciously. And like he said, the things that he's seeded are requiring more water right now than some of the other larger things. 
deadheading, he's left the heads on his iris, deadheading will help to reserve the moisture in the plant because they, it's not gonna work so hard to produce seed. You're a bit of a slacker here today, no, Tom, but some... not as big as me in my <laughs> back garden. So we're gonna talk tools. Yep. Um, one of the things I like to use is Yep, so just, you, I'm just scanning the garden a little bit here. Okay. So, all so right. One of the tools I like to use is a watering wand, and you can get these just about anywhere. I usually buy them off of AM Leonard. AM Leonard is a website that's fairly inexpensive. It's online, it's not local, but they offer some, some increased, um, I don't know, more industrial quality or industrially made tools that last a long time. This is an aluminum rain shower nozzle that um, I got from AM Leonard. I think Tom, you got this one yeah, under one. under my suggestion, but mine's over 20 years old. It's never broken, and the plastic ones that you get at some of the nursery centers or the big box stores, they crack after a couple years, and then you got to buy something else. And of course, there's water used to produce these. So if you buy one that lasts 20 to 30 years, you're saving money and you're saving water. And we're talking about water today. Another th hold that. I think it's back on. That, awesome. Yeah. Another thing is a brass shutoff. And a solid brass shutoff is really nice to have. I have a dram brass shutoff. That's this isn't a dram, but um, sometimes these are plastic. But I get mine. I got mine from Am Leonard almost 30 years ago, and it's still it's still ticking. It's great. Wands come in 18 inches, 24, 36, and 48. Um, I've never found that more than 24 inches is needed because that wand gets really heavy. So if you're older, yeah. like us, <laughs> it can be really heavy. And unless you're watering a lot of overhead things, like in a greenhouse situation, you really don't need a four foot wand. Two foot is what um, works best that I think of. If you're gonna get a watering can, and watering cans are actually really necessary because if you fill one of these up and you take the rose end off, I never advise to buy a watering can that you can't take the rose end off of. So this one unscrews, but I prefer something that's got a smaller top to it. And you don't want tools that leak. If they're leaking, it's a problem. Just like a drippy faucet, or right now I have a leaky refrigerator line to my ice maker that I've got to get fixed. It's like it's a huge waste of water. So you want to put the water right where you need it. So if you buy a watering can with a removable rose, you can just put the water right where you need it. This one is really pointy and you can pour just directly onto the plant. And that's or right, it, on, or right at its base. Yeah, right, right at its right base. at its base. And because you, this I use for like seed beds and stuff. Yeah, it's more of a broadcast yep, that you yep. want to do, and you don't want to disturb the maybe this topsoil too much because yep, the seeds the are seeds there. Are, seeds sometimes aren't I very use this much. Kelly almost all the time. Yeah, yeah. It, they're, just, they're great plant. tools. They're really great tools to have because then you're not throwing water everywhere. You're just putting water where it's needed at that new plant, the base of the new plant. And then when you're not watering everywhere, you're also not helping weed seeds to germinate. You'll yeah. keep your weeds, your weed bed, the, the load of weed seeds that are there already existing in the soil, you'll keep those down by not watering just remember, everywhere. remember, you disturb your soil, you, you've got seed, weed You're seeds in there that seeds. are there for years. Some of them last many years, so so that's why you see them every time, and that's why weeding is a big thing now. Yep. Although it's kind of, the dryness is kind of stuck. Yeah, the weeds are bit. down with the dryness. Yeah. So what bucket, else we got here? buckets are great, or trays that hold water, they're really great. Sometimes you'll buy a plant and you don't quite get it planted soon enough and it's wilting. Well, the best way to resuscitate a plant is sort of like if you're super dehydrated and you need IV, <laughs> IV hydration. It's like, honestly, fill a bucket up with an inch of water and just set the plant in there. I usually water my house plants, they're all outside now, but I usually water my plants in the shower. I just set them in the bathtub and I turn on the shower and I water my plants that way because they drain, they're able to absorb as much water as they need, the leaves get cleaned off and it actually mimics the rain. So filling up a bucket of water helps the plants absorb water from the base but also from the top and leave them there for 24 hours. It's not going to hurt them and then get that plant out after it's fully re de rehydrated and then you can pop that plant into the ground. You can but tell if it's wilting like this and then all of a sudden it's spouted out, right? you know it's gotten what it needs from a, from a water perspective. Yep, so dragging hoses around is <laughs> a pain in the rear end sometimes, quite frankly, but you wanna buy Especially a quality a hose that- Especially you're gonna knock things over, yeah. So yeah, has, yeah. Which but, I do all the time. Do you? <laughs> By, see, I, I used to have my hose buried in one location so that it came out right where I needed it. So buy a good quality hose. I had a hose in the ground for over 11 years. It was really nice. It was yeah. up in my, my kitchen garden, my potager, and I just turned it on where I needed it there. But having a sturdy hose 
and make sure you look at what it's manufactured for. Some hoses have lead content in them and it's not recommended to water food gardens with them. So make sure you check out your label on your hose. And again, you don't want leaks. If you have leaks, repair them. You don't have to throw a hose away. You, can get, you can get the repair ends at the hardware store or at some of the big box stores. Um, a Y, a Y connector. Why? Why? You tell them why Ooh. you want a Y connector. Well, because then you can have multiple watering systems going on, maybe a wand and maybe a hose or something go like in, that. Go in two different directions? Yeah, for and use the water. Your, yeah, for instance, at your spigot over here, we'll walk over there in a minute, you've got two hoses, right? So, but I don't have a Y. Why not? You just take them on and off? No, I'm going to do You're that. You're retired. You have, you <laughs> have extra time for that. Yeah, I'm yeah, going to so get a Y. I'm going to yeah, get a Y. Yeah, they're, they're kind of nice. And usually when I buy tools, I try and keep the moving parts to a minimum because it's just one less thing to break. But a Y, you have to have the shut off on and off. Yep, on both. On, on and off board. on both sides. Yep. And then, then you're in your hoses Very are in place, to have, ready to go. Otherwise, you're disconnecting hoses and yep. switching. And, and, it, and it takes a long time. So what else we got here, Kelly? We've got some sprinklers, Tom. Hey, oh, what? sprinklers. Isn't sprinklers. this great, guys? No. I mean, you just you put this no. down, and then you go for a run, you go golfing, you, what, you come back, and your whole thing is water. Well, that could be nice. <laughs> it could be nice. Except for that, uh -oh. do you come back, and there's water running all over your sidewalk and down into the storm drain? I hope not. That would be bad. That would be really bad, because that's... Yeah, yeah. Has, has the wind picked up, and the wind is actually blowing the water hither and yon, and now we've got a huge evaporation factor going Especially on? Especially with these... The, these uh, yeah. rotating ones here that are not insulated. Yeah, they, there's a high evaporation factor with many sprinklers. So the heavier the droplets, the larger the droplets, the less water and evaporative um, factor you have with the sprinkler. That's why flood irrigation is so great. So if you were to go to a run, just lay your hose down at one of the highest yep. parts of your garden and just let the water run all over the ground. You flood irrigate, you're only putting water on the surface where actually it's only needed and you waste a lot less water than yeah. using a sprinkler. So my suggestion is try it. You know, you maybe you know your garden perfectly, but lay your hose down in different spots of your garden and see if that will work. Yep. Because then you've got nothing going into the air or evaporating and everything should just ride on there because that's what a good soaking really does. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You just really want to soak the plants that need it and that area where things are growing. For instance, on a tree, it would be that trip line, the outer edges of yep. the, the canopy that fall down. That's the area that needs to be saturated with water. And the easiest way to do that is to just throw the hose on the ground and let it kind of flood that area. What else we got? Well, I think we need to walk around and look at a rain Let's barrel go. for water collection. Water collection is important because instead of using all the potable water that's going through our water treatment plants yep. and everything else that's got chlorine in it, that actually kills the fungal mycorrhiza in the soil. It's better to use rainwater um, or water that you've collected from somewhere, reusing your water from something. Um, Cooking, that kind of thing is great too. So I'll show um, you an example yeah, of a way to collect yeah. water here. So, All right. most of us know about rain barrels, and I think Olmsted County used to have some rain barrel collection sites, but I don't know if those are as um, okay, as prevalent as they used to be. We're walking with the stand. That's what we do. All right. <clears throat> uh, one thing to note here: I got a bird bath, and you know, if, if you want like insects, like bees, to drink. You gotta have something out there for them to float. Now they got the lip there, but I usually put a something to float in there, like a piece of wood or something like that. But um, I'll tell you, I have a rock in mind. A rock would be even yeah. better. Um, all right. So here's the rain barrel for water collection. And Tom, you want to talk just a little bit about this? We should get this down here. Yeah, this is um, this is pretty awesome. Actually, credit go out. Um, one thing that I forgot to bring was my flow meter. I have a flow meter that I put on the end of my hose so I can monitor how much water I use. Um, during the growing season and it's um, it's nice flow to see meter. a flow meter. So flow meters are really great You can kind of calculate see, compare it to your bill if you want or yeah Especially if you're keeping track of like like I said, we're 2.2 inches below Maybe you want to catch up there I And when know. I was involved in the Princeton water study a couple years ago for my veg garden output versus the amount of water yeah. I used Yeah, it was nice for data tracking. There's a so lot we got of, one more thing to show one you more and thing. Because um, what else can you do? So, so wait, here's my uh, sp spigot that doesn't have a Y <laughs> connector on it so you can ask me again kelly why but uh, yeah well because you haven't one. done it yet yeah. i'll give one um so, so we've got a soaker hose right here soaker hoses are also another great way to just put water right where you need it and tom has this soaker hose winding around his hops 
So that's another great way to minimize evaporation and um, put water right where you need it at the base of your plants. Yeah, it's another think, love of mine is uh, growing hops and growing beer. And uh, basically, hops need a lot of water, need a lot of nutrients. Um, uh, they and, and they love the sun here. So you can see they're already 20, 20 feet high, some of them up there. So, yep. So this is a good example of a drip irrigation hose. <clears throat> and I just turn it on and Again, I don't have a flow meter, but I can tell, you know, roughly how long it goes, especially if it starts running out of the garden. So with that. That's it. That's it. So hopefully you know how to better water wisely. Check out umnextension.edu <laughs> forward slash water wisely, and you can learn more tricks at uh, our great University of Minnesota Extension. And we're going to, as usual, we'll be posting things on our on this yeah. as far as links and things yep, like that. Yep, and head so. to our uh, Facebook page, University of Minnesota. Uh, OMC County Extension Master Gardeners. <laughs> Hello. Okay. All right. With that. See you. Rock your day. Rock your day.